Hello and welcome to this new class together. Today we work a little bit on balancing. So get some blocks in case balancing is not your forte. Together with me today there is Patrick. He will always show you the easier modification of what I'm doing. So just check and make sure like that you look what I'm doing, but also what Patrick is showing you. Today the class indeed is about balance, so we will start with no further ado in a cross-legged position. You can always sit on top of a block if you feel you need it. To elevate your hips and allow the knees to open on side. Allow the shoulder to roll up and down, open the chest. And start to tune into the breath, breathing in and out to the nostrils, making sure that we are ready mentally, physically, and also spiritually to approach practice. So remove any clutter either around you or also what sometimes we have is mental clutter. So make space. Start to breathe into the nose. Exhale from the nose. Tune your breath to the movement. Tune your breath to be same length. So they can guide you as you move and can become that kind of steering wheel you can use whenever is needed for you to do so. On the next inhalation, send the arms up, breathe up. Exhale, draw the hands in front of the heart space. Inhale, send the arms up. Exhale, draw the hand in front of the heart space. Last one, send the arms up. Hands in front of the heart space. Take a moment to set your intention, release the hands on top of the knees, start to make a circle with your neck, chin towards the chest, right here, right shoulder, back of the head, left ear, left shoulder. Continue in this fashion. Next circle, as soon as your right ear is towards your right shoulder, pose there. Find the stretch, maybe even adding one hand on top of the head, finding a little bit more pressure into the left side. Chin a little bit down, just tilting the head slightly, nothing too big, maybe just very, very few tilts. Noticing the sensation into the neck. Release the hand onto the knees, bring the chin towards the chest, move towards the left ear. Circle back, right ear, chin towards the chest. Again, another circle, flossing, read the neck, creating space. Next chin towards the chest, we bring the left ear towards the left shoulder, left hand on top of the head, finding a little bit of a lateral stretch into our neck, chin a little bit down, chin a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit up. Relax the hand, neutralize the chin, bring the chin towards the chest, and then indeed neutralize. Find yourself up and tall on top of your spine. Open the eyes, roll the hands onto your hands and knees, tabletop position. And we want to place the hands under the shoulders and the knee hip width apart. I want just to, for a moment, like warm up our wrist. So be very spontaneous into your warm up of your wrist. I like to move the hands in different direction when I'm here. So start to move the hands different direction, circle like Patrick is doing, or simply shifting position of hands like I'm doing. So whatever feels good for you, maybe just to, to move the wrist, feeling whatever you owe tension and moving the hands. Maybe leaning into the hands and move away, or simply staying with the weight onto the hands and moving. On the next inhalation, plant the hands down, fingers are pointing forward. We do a couple of knuckle raises, so lift the thumbs, lift the palms. Exhale down, lift, exhale down, and lift, exhale down. Send the fingers towards the knee, a little bit of stretching. And start to sit back, take your toes if you need to, stretch the forearms, uh, move forward. Exhale, sit back, and move forward. Last one, sit back, 
and um, move forward, flip the palm, bring the top of the hands onto the floor, and we start to open and close the hands. If you want, you can clear, bring them even figuring, like facing towards each other, or like Patrick is showing, facing back. Open and close. And relax. Bring both hands onto the floor. Starting by sending the right arm up, place the left hand a little bit closer, right arm reach up, finding it thread the needle. Exhale, elbow, sh shoulder, chest, ear onto the ground. Staying here, sending the left arm forward. Option to stay here into your twist or extend the left leg back. You can extend the left leg back, staying strong, maybe even lifting the left leg up. Thank you for a couple of breaths. Squeeze everything in. Find the balance already here. We just dip straight away into balance. Bring the knee close. Again, where they came from, left hand under the shoulder, push and send the right arm up. Open, open, open. Right hand comes down, closer to the midline. Send the left arm up. Thread the needle other side. Elbow, shoulder, ear onto the floor. Send the right arm forward. Stay here or extend your right leg back. Eventually, maybe lifting the right leg up. Finding the balancing position also here. Feel yourself challenged or find a variation that works better for you. Exhale, both knees down, sliding the right hand towards the right shoulder, press into the floor, send the right left arm up. Exhale, both hands on to the ground. Walking our hands forward destination will be our puppy pose. So, you can bring your forehead, the chin, or the chest onto the ground. Extend your arm forward, melting the chest onto the floor. Thinking really about to send the tailbone up. And just breathe here. Sorry if you will hear anything on the microphone since he's hooked on top of my bra. Keep breathing in and out. Pressing and opening the shoulder. Remind yourself you can always widen the hands if it's needed to make it a little bit more comfortable for you into this puppy. Inhaling, pressing into the hands. Find that tuck into the tailbone. So you move in a posterior tilt. Round the spine. Round, round, round. Round, round, round. And start to drop the pelvis. And as you drop the pelvis, the chest open forward. And we find our seal pose. From here we open the chest, or Patrick will show you maybe sphinx pose, bringing the elbows down. Back feet stay kind of active, so it's not that the back of your body is doing nothing. And if you are in sphinx like Patrick, elbows are pulling the chest forward, so really very strong, also into your seal. Exhale for everybody, forehand onto the hands, like crocodile pose. Very different than crocodile for movement. <laughs> And we place the hands under the shoulder and we find the child pose very, very soft and quick. Just to remind ourselves that we can always pause the video and come back here. <laughs> Why not? In any lift in the chest, bring yourself in our downward facing dog. Pedal in the feet, move from side to side. A little bit of balancing already. So send your right leg up into your downward facing dog. Stay here into your three-legged dog. If you're open to balance, send your left hand towards the left calf. Two-legged dog for three, two, one. Both hands onto the floor. Three-legged dog. Step your right foot between the hands. Pressing into the right foot, hands onto the ground or in front of the heart. Lift the back leg up. Stay into a crunching warrior. So the knee stays bent. My hands are in my heart. Or send the arms forward. And then with a the strong push, I lift myself up and I find my regular warrior three. So I'm super strong here. My left heel is kicking away from me. I bring my left knee into the chest and I'm standing. I grab the back of my thigh. I love those, they come from mobility. Find your foot flex, maybe at demi point. Extend the left leg forward. Bend the knee. Extend. Keep the tailbone nice and neutral. Extend. Now we keep the foot extended the leg extended, sorry, and we start to bend on the standing leg again, and we find the warrior three again. And again, this time maybe you can reach back in front of the heart, 
We start to bend the knee, so we start the descent like if we were aeroplanes, maybe hands on ground like Patrick showing you, and I'm stepping my left foot back. I bring my left knee onto the ground and I find my anjane. I use my anjane to send my arms up. I take a hold of the right wrist with the left hand and I take a little lateral stretch. So I try to keep my pelvis in line. So I want to resist the movement. I don't want fully following the movement. Keep squaring my left hip forward. In and come back to center. Both arms are reaching forward. Inhale here, right arms reach back, open. Bring your hands forward. And you can stay here or lift the back knee. And open back. Last two. Breathe in. And back. Arms forward. And back. Wherever you are, we move the hands down. Step back, find your downward facing dog. So we move to the left side this time. So on the next inhalation, left leg reach up, find your three-legged dog. If you want to join me into the balance, right hand, right calf. Three breaths roughly. The idea is like to find this two-legged dog. I'm always asking you, poor legged dog, just two legs. Exhale, both hands down. Start to bring the left foot between the hands, slow motion, right? And then from here, bring the hands in front of the heart. We move into our crouched warrior, crunching warrior, so the knee stays bent. Inhale, fly the right leg up. Keep the knee bent. Strong, strong engagement. Maybe the arms are reaching forward. Press into the left foot and then fly into your regular warrior three. So strong, pressing the left thumb down. Keep keeping, kicking into the right heel. Bring the right knee into the chest. Find your store, grabbing the back of the thigh. Exhale, extend the leg, bend the knee, exhale, extend the leg, last one, exhale, extend the leg, flex the foot, start to bring the leg back, we land in our Anjane Asana, bring the left knee, right knee down, sending the arms forward, we open like a book, sending the left arm back and open. Of course, like before, send the arm forward, maybe lifting the back knee. Exhale, open back. Back up. And again, open into side. Bring yourself forward. And open into side. Send the arms towards the sky. Grabbing the left wrist this time and leaning onto the other side, finding your side bend. Moving, 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 opening, resisting the temptation of dropping everything onto the right. Come back to center, both hands onto the ground. Step back, find your plank position this time. Option knees are on the ground, off the ground. Exhale, chaturanga down. Inhale, cobra up dog. Pavis floating into your up dog. Roll the shoulder blades down. Exhale, and open the chest. Downward facing dog. All right, we may make it a little bit more spicy for our balancing. Send the right leg up. So you know the gist, either it's a two-legged dog or a three-legged dog, so hold the ankle for a bit. Press it really into the thumb, index, middle finger of your right hand. Both hands onto the floor, step your right foot close to the right thumb. We move into our warrior three, so hands on floor or in front of your heart. Knees bent, strong back leg. Arms can reach forward if you want. Press into the foot, lift. Strong warrior three. Exhale, knee into the chest. This time, left, ha right hand, left knee, or like Patrick is showing you, grabbing the, the outside of your foot. Finding your Lord dancing Shiva, left arms reach back. So for the foot position, you can decide even if you want to point your right foot, if you're holding the outside of your left foot, you can decide, right? That's the beauty of it. Square the chest forward, grab the back of your thigh, and we bend the knee. And again, we push like if you are giving a slow-mo kick. Bend the knee, and extend. Last one, bend, and extend. Now, send the foot back. Find your warrior three with aeroplane arms. Bend the standing leg, maybe hands on ground. Mm -hmm. Strong, strong, strong. And this time we land the left foot down. We find Hanai lunge directly. 
So I lunge, this time arms are reaching up, bend the elbows and open, then circle the arms forward and send your right arm back. Inhale, right arm forward, arms are reaching, bend the elbows, both hands reach forward, and then we open. <laughs> Last one. Look like a little bit of a choreo here. Arms up, bend, forward, and back. As you're staying back here, shift more weight into the right foot, maybe left hand onto the ground, or if you are with me, without hands onto the ground, find your reverse half moon. What just happened? I don't know. <laughs> Exhale, step back. Arms are reaching up again. Holding the right wrist, leaning towards the left side. Now, if you want to intensify this one for the legs, you want to maybe micro bend the back knee. So if it's a little bit more of a work for the legs. Exhale, we made the hands down. Find your downward facing dog or go through your vinyasa. You choose. There is like a philosophical talk we can say about free will, but <laughs> We keep it now that we choose. On the next inhalation, left leg reach up. Maybe right hand, right ankle. Stay into the balance. Exhale, both hands down. Step the left foot between the hands or close to your left thumb. Prepare for your warrior three. You're already crunching warrior. Left knee stays bent. Arms are reaching forward. Strong, 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 strong. Extend the leg. Keep the warrior three nice and active. Right knee into the chest. Holding that side of the left right knee or that side of the right foot, finding your dancing Shiva. Again, position of foot can vary according to what feels good to have everything nice and active. Look forward, inhale, grab the back of the thigh, bend and extend. <laughs> bend and extend. You're liking these hamstrings work, Beth? <laughs> bend <laughs> and extend. Send your right foot back. Keeping the crunching warriors a transition with the arms back and then land the right foot. Now, arms are reaching up, bend the elbows open, circle the arms forward and this time it's the left arm that move back. Inhale, send the arm forward and up, open, arms are reaching and open to the back. We do it another time. Inhale, open the chest, arms reach forward, and we open back. Now we stay here, and we transition in our half moon, so more weight into the left foot. Send the hand onto the ground, now keep it floating into your Pavrita, Ardha Chandrasana, so reverse half moon. Beautiful and nice. Step the right foot down, send the arms up, maybe micro bend, or even like bend a lot your right knee. Catching the left wrist and letting this down onto the right side. Poof. If this one is something. Come back to center, both hands onto the ground. Take a step back from your plank, to go through your vinyasa or not. Find your up dog or not. Downward facing dog. Mm. From your downward facing dog, we will take a step towards the front of the mat with the feet outside of your hands. Or you can always try to have a little hopping and then release the feet down. Bring the hands in front of the heart, find your malasana squat, and then move from side to side. So we'll add some mobility that for us definitely is an element of balance. <laughs> so here, you can always place the hands behind your hips to support yourself if you had the space, hands behind the hips, or just place the hands in front of the heart, turn into the inside of your left foot and drop the left knee down. So Patrick will show with the hands down. And then we come up and we do exactly the same onto the other side. We come back up, we change, and up and the other side. Now we add a little bit of an element of balance, Hamir. Now I place my toes pointing forward. Patrick will show you with the hands on ground. I shift more weight into the right leg and I extend my left leg forward. Yes. 
and then I bring my foot where it came from and I change, right? Little bit of transition into low pistol squats. We change, other side, and down, creating a little bit of these variations. Bring the foot down, hands onto the ground, lift the hips high. Shake your head, shake your hips. We take one last balance and is our crow pose. What better balance than arm balance? So walk the feet a little bit back, bend the elbows back, and bring your knees somewhat into, on top of the elbows, just for easy transitioning. Patrick will show you like stepping on top of a block. Think about key in a socket. This one is what my teacher, Daniel Rama, used to say all the time. So shift the weight forward, dome your spine, bring one heel in, maybe the other one joins in. And we keep balancing, squeezing everything into the midline, super strong. So as we are in our crow pose, we have a couple of options here. Either jump back or step back, you choose. I will step back actually today. So send your left foot back, right foot back into our plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Knees on the ground, finding a little child on a size up position. Taking a moment here to observe, closing the eyes. Preparing to close. With a little back bending, with some mobility, like slide it in. So, place the hands onto the floor, cross the ankles back, sit towards the back, and voila, legs are appearing in front of you. Or like sit on the side like Patrick is showing you. Why not? Flexing the feet, gauging the quads, send the arms up. Option also to bend the knee if you want to, or placing a block under the sitting bones. Exhale, fold. Choose your option. Make yourself long. Thinking about not an arrival position. A lot of time in class I see people, okay, I'm catching my foot, I should be good. No, it's more like a keep constant willpower exercise, so to keep yourself long. I'm not thinking my feet are my, uh, my finish line. I'm thinking like, maybe my forehead or my toes would be my finish line. <laughs> I don't know. Inhale, come up. All right, placing the hands back, we move on our back, finding our uh, bridge pose. So as we move down, maybe I place myself in this direction. So I want to lay onto my back. As I lay onto my back, I want to make sure that my hands can touch my ankles and my shoulder are nice and under. I press into my elbows, I tuck my tailbone, and I lift myself into my bridging pose. I really make sure I'm shrugging my shoulder under so they can better lift. So I make very strong contact with my, the sole of my left foot, left toe, and I bring my right knee in, and I keep a knee bent. Keep pushing in, exhale, I drop my hip. Inhale, I lift, exhale, I drop, inhale, I lift. Exhale, I drop. Last one, I lift and I bring the right foot down. Pressing into the right foot, big toe is on the ground, left knee is in the chest. Finding this kind of <laughs> double angle position, I drop my hip down, inhale, I bridge up. Exhale, I drop down, inhale, I bridge it up, down, up. Last one. Down and up, both feet down. Start to bring the top of the spine, middle spine, lower spine onto the ground. Take a moment here to rest onto the back. Getting the knees into the chest, squeeze yourself super duper tight. Finishing with our twisted spinal. So when you're ready, open the arms like a big T, drop your knees onto the right side, and maybe placing a hand on top of the left knee. So Patrick is having his knee bent. If you want to make the experience a little bit more challenging, you can always extend the leg. I like to extend my legs as I'm there, opening the chest, 
Maybe if I can reach it with the hands even. Looking towards the left shoulder. This one is actually my favorite side to twist. Always something happened to the spine of when I'm here. In and in, coming back up, according if your knees are bent or straight, you move accordingly. And then again, moving on to the other side. Looking over the right shoulder, finding space into the chest, into the spine. Close your eyes, preparing for final relaxation. In and in, bringing the legs up, whatever motion you took. And then take a little, little last round into the spine. And then separate the feet as wide as the mat. Arms are wide. Just resting here into your final relaxation. What for a beautiful combination of words. Final relaxation. So whatever you are, make sure that you take this time to fully drop in. This is the beautiful benefit of the line. You can always, you know, keep longer shavasanas. That's what I will cue you for. I want to thank you for being with us today. Keep balancing. And we see each other in the next class. Thank you.